So are freight brokerages starting to slowly go instinct? What in the world is going on? Every time I open up the news, I see another brokerage company going out of business or declaring chapter 11 bankruptcy, or they are having massive layoffs. But why specifically the freight brokerages? Look at these four or five articles here. I mean, what's going on? So in this video, I thought I would dedicate a video explaining to you, the audience out there, what in the world is going on and why are these freight brokerages getting hammered the most? So first, let me explain to you what is a freight broker and what is their role? A freight broker is a middleman between the shipper and the carrier. Instead of taking possession of the freight, the broker facilitates communication between the shippers and the carrier. They're the ones making sure that the handoff goes smoothly between the carrier and the shipper and that the freight arrives safely and on time. That's really the role of a freight broker. So they go after manufacturing plants, they get them as a customer, and then they distribute these loads to carriers, okay? So now we need to understand why the shift, okay? So the manufacturing plants get solicited at least 10 to 15 times a week right now, especially in a downfall economy. So if you produce whatever it is you're producing in the US and you're shipping and you have a big manufacturing plant, you are getting solicited nonstop by carriers. Now, if a broker, we need to understand right now that if a broker doesn't pay a carrier, okay, then the carrier has the right to go after the manufacturing plant for payment even though that manufacturing plant paid the carrier. So if I, as a broker, decide not to pay the carriers, the carriers will go after the manufacturing plant under the Bills of Lading Act, okay? Now, if a manufacturing company has ever gotten into this tangle, and there's a lot of them that have, okay? So what happens? Now they have to pay the initial carrier a second time. So now they're afraid to use freight brokers, and they're starting to use more asset-based carriers, okay? Who would you use? Would you use an asset-based carrier, or would you use a freight broker? I, for sure, if I was a manufacturing plant, would use an asset-based carrier that has a, uh, a brokerage department. Just a quick story of what happened to us. There was a freight broker that, you know, there's we, we stumble upon this a lot of times throughout the year that there's a freight broker, closes their doors, shut down, doesn't declare bankruptcy or whatever, they just shut down their doors, their phone numbers are no longer working. What do we do? Automatically, we send the bills to the shippers and the receivers, letting them know that they are liable to pay this invoice. I mean, it doesn't matter if the shipper is going to take it on himself, the receiver is going to take it on himself, but I am getting paid at the end of the day, which is the actual carrier that hauled the freight from point A to point B. So it does happen that the shipper or the receiver will pay a second time or else I will force them into litigation. Now, I can assure you that most of these companies that I go after end up being my customers after the process is done. Why? Because I explain to them that you shouldn't be using a freight brokerage, you should be using an asset-based carrier, especially when you're shipping and pumping out a ton of loads out of your facility. So the second reason why brokerage companies are going extinct is because these manufacturing plants are becoming smarter and smarter. They are a lot more in tune with what's happening in the market. They are sick and tired of brokerage companies making 20 to 35%, sometimes even 40% markup on their loads. So what happens is that a freight brokerage will charge a company $2,000 or $2,500, and then they find a carrier to haul it for $1,500 or $1,600, and leaving the markup at 30, 40% sometimes, sometimes even 50%, depends on the carrier that you stumble upon. So these manufacturing plants are starting to get smarter and smarter. They have a database of their own of carriers. How do they have this database? Because these carriers are directly calling these manufacturing plants and asking to get on their, uh, their email blast or whatever it is that they do to get rates. So over the course of the time, these manufacturing companies have started storing these email addresses. Technology is key in today's industry. So as a manufacturing plant now, I have 40, 50, 60, 70 emails that I've stored of people calling me all the time, asking me to add them as a carrier. And now what I do as a manufacturing plant is I just blast these 60, 70 carriers to give me rates on my future shipments. So the third reason why freight brokerages are starting to close down is because the carriers have started to become a lot smarter. What do I mean by that? So the carriers know already which manufacturing companies have freight. They also have you know, sales reps that are going directly after these manufacturing plants. They are sick and tired of the brokerage companies marking up 
you know, 20, 30%. They're sick and tired of these freight brokerages not paying them their waiting time. They're sick and tired of, you know, not getting revised confirmations. They're sick and tired of, you know, freight brokerages trying to make every excuse in the book in order to not to pay waiting time, delays at the border, uh, you know, drive, uh, driver delays nonstop at the shippers, at the receivers. You know, it's very hard to get the money out of the freight brokerages. So the carriers have started becoming a lot smarter and they're going directly to these manufacturing plants. Now, again, as a manufacturing company, who would you prefer to work with? With the asset-based carrier or with the brokerage? At the end of the day, that asset-based carrier can outperform rate-wise the brokerage anytime. All right, number four in the lab, we left the best one for last, okay? The biggest reason now that freight brokerage are starting to die down is because of personal relationships. Okay, as the new generation kicks into the market, we're talking about the 30 year olds, the 35 year olds, the 25 year olds, the 20 year olds, personal relationships are starting to die down. I see this on my end all the time. So a freight brokerage, I would say, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I mean, the hockey tickets, like the, the, the amount of, um, you know, they used to have in a brokerage firm, they used to have allocate money to fine and dine customers. Okay, today the customers cannot be fine and dined. Okay, and I'll give you a personal, um, you know, story of mine. Whenever I have, you know, a bill of sale on my desk for five trucks, eight trucks, 10 trucks, we're talking about a million dollar deal that's on the table. Now, I would usually send out this bill of sale to five or six different banks. I work with uh, A lender banks. Now, um, you know, one of them, one of the account reps in one of the banks is, a, is an older gentleman, I would say probably 40, five years old to 55 years old. I don't know, but, but basically over 40. Okay. And his approach to me is always, Hey, you know, here's some tickets. Here's some hockey tickets. Hey, let me take you out for dinner. Hey, let me take you out for lunch. Hey, when I come, you know, let me bring you some lunch. And these, these personal relationships that they're trying to form, I, as a customer, I'm just not interested in it. Okay. I don't have time to go to a baseball game and I don't have time to go to a hockey game. Um, you know, it really is the, uh, the most competitive rate is who wins. Okay. You don't need to find and dine me. You don't need to, um, you know, to buy me gifts, just give me the most competitive rate. But the mentality, that old school mentality that, you know, you need to find and dine a customer, um, and you'll get their business. But that bank that tries to find and dine me always comes in at 1% or one and a quarter percent higher than the other banks, right? So I see that there's a whole budget allocated to, uh, find and dine customers. And maybe for a lot of people it works, but as this generation gets younger and younger, or, you know, new people are starting to come into the market, you don't have traffic managers that hold positions anymore for 25 years or 30 years like before. You know, how many times I have, you know, probably 12, 14,000 manufacturing plants a part of my database. And every time I do an email blast, the abundance of kickback emails that I get that, you know, the, the auto replies that this person is long, no longer in our, this person is no longer in our company or that person is no longer in our company. There's so many, you know, auto replies that the person is no longer there. And I could have sworn that, you know, it, it was a new, in my notes, I see that it was, you know, it was a traffic manager that only started two years ago. And now again, they switched their positions. People are not holding down jobs the way they used to. So this personal relationship is, you know, there's more strain on it because, you know, your account reps keep changing, right? So these manufacturing plants, I mean, they, you're not going to find and dine a manufacturing plant today anymore. Okay. And the kickbacks are starting to become less and less frequent and actual, uh, you know, the best rate actually wins. Okay. And that's really what the companies are going for, especially in a downfall economy. So these freight brokerages, they just can't compete with asset based carriers. For example, you know, if we specialize in a certain lane, let's say it's, you know, Atlanta, Georgia to Toronto, if we specialize in that lane, there's no way a broker is getting into that lane. All right. And giving the manufacturing plant with his markup more of a competitive rate than I am. It's just not happening. Okay. Well, hopefully through this video, you understand the pressures that freight brokerages have these days. And it kind of explains to you that in a downfall economy, what's happening to these freight brokerages. It's, it's really sad to see these companies die down. A lot of them have been in business for 10, 15, 20, 25 plus years. And you see, you know, bigger companies that are starting to fold and you, you ask yourself what's going on in our industry. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of clarification with what's happening in our industry. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Give it a thumbs up. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video.